Hey guys, today in the shop we have a 2011 Kia Sorento with a 3.5 liter and it's got a major oil leak. I'm going to show you exactly what causes this on 99% of these vehicles. Oftentimes goes misdiagnosed as a rear main seal or an engine. So it's not too uncommon as you know someone brings a car into a shop and the shop doesn't really have any experience with that particular vehicle and they misdiagnose it. Um, oftentimes at the expense of the customer, even if the shop doesn't charge the person, you know that's more downtime to finally get the job fixed right. And a lot of times the shops aren't capable of doing the actual repair, so it needs to go out to somebody else. Um, on these Kias, it's pretty common to have this major oil leak that's mistaken for a rear main seal a lot of times, or even major engine failures. Uh, people will chase the oil leak all over the place, and really, it's the simple part. It's the oil pressure sensor. Um, the oil pressure sensor on these cars is located under the intake manifold, and once you get under the intake manifold, you'll see that the oil runs down inside the valley between the two cylinder heads, and then it runs out the back of the valley down into where the flywheel and the uh, torque converter are, and that'll be mistaken for a rear main seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how to get to this. I'll try to get some detailed pictures showing you where it's located, a few of the tips and tricks I use to get this plenum out without breaking any parts, and um, I'll show you how to get this sensor fixed up. So this oil leak is common on both the Hyundai and the Kia. Um, as you know, they're essentially the same exact vehicle, but any of them with this 3.5, I'm not exactly sure of the year range. I'll, uh, I'll try to look that up and put it in the description below, but um, this 3.5 engine in either of those cars, it's very common. But before we go changing our parts, let's just verify that this is actually where we have the leak. Um, what we'll do is we'll start off, just take this engine cover off, comes off pretty easily, just tug on a little bit and it pops right off. And then we'll look down right in front of the intake manifold on the belt side of the engine, if you look down inside between the two cylinder heads, you'll see that it'll be wet. If it's wet down in there, that oil pressure sensor is bad. The typical symptom of this leak is oil pouring out of between the engine and the transmission. Um, a lot of times it'll be thrown up on the lift and you'll see it. I mean, this car dumped out almost an entire quart of oil from the time that I drove it from the parking lot into my shop here. So. Another thing to be cautious of this, if, if you are going to be driving it at all, is check the oil level. Um, this leak can be so bad that it'll deplete all of the oil within minutes. So obviously uh, we don't want to have an engine failure caused by something that could be a simple fix. All right, so after checking that out, we found that it is definitely leaking from that oil pressure switch. So what we're gonna do is start taking it apart. Now, I like to take the whole air box lid off as one assembly with the tube. Um, my recommendation would be to spray with a little bit of PB Blaster or penetrating oil, whatever you have, the clamps that hold the boots onto the air duct. Um, Hyundai and Kia use these really strange uh, worm style clamps that once they bind up that's it the whole clamp will twist and they'll pop right off so lubricate the threads on that a little bit before you take it apart and it'll make it a lot easier and you'll be able to reuse the clamps
Now is a great time to change your air filter. Next, disconnect all the electrical connectors that go to the plenum. and unbolt the plastic retainer that holds the harness. So after you get all those plugs undone, the next thing to do is take off the rest of these hoses here that go to the plenum. There's going to be one that goes over the brake booster. There's one that goes to the EVAP can uh, solenoid right here. And there's another one right behind the throttle body that goes down. Now if you're worried about remembering where any of those came from, a uh, quick little tip you can do is you can get colored zip ties from any auto parts store and they'll come in like a multi-pack of like yellow, green, red and you can label one side with a zip tie and then also the hose so it'll always go back to where it goes. As far as the electrical connectors go, you really can't plug them into the wrong spot. They're all kind of keyed and they can only go back into the connector they came from. Just do a good job of being thorough and making sure that you get everything plugged back in. Once all those hoses are off, the next step is going to be the throttle body. So I personally like to take the throttle body off of the plenum and leave it in the vehicle. And the reason being is there's coolant going through the throttle body. So the options are either drain the cooling system, then take the plenum off with the throttle body attached to it. Disconnect the lines without draining the cooling system. You've got to do it really quick or you're going to make a mess. And either way, it's still going to make a little bit of a mess, or just unbolt the throttle body right from the plenum. So there's three 10 millimeter bolts all the way around the perimeter, and then there's one 12 millimeter bolt for a bracket that attaches the throttle body to the cylinder head. So it's a 12 millimeter bolt, three 10 millimeter bolts. The next thing you got going on here is there is a power steering line. It's actually a power steering cooler that bolts to the back of the plenum. All it is is one 10 millimeter bolt right on the back and you can just push the cooler and just let it rest back against the, uh, against the firewall. So all that's left to get this upper plenum off is on the back of the plenum there's a 14 millimeter bolt. Now, it's a little hard to see, but it's on the front side of the plenum, on the belt side, and if you just reach back behind there, you'll feel there's a little bolt that has a bracket, and that bracket goes down to the, the valve cover area. All you need to do is take the bolt off that attaches it to the plenum. You don't need to take the whole bracket off. Then you can take off the five bolts and two nuts that hold the upper plenum, to the lower plenum. All right, we're almost to this sensor. So all we have left is the lower plenum. Now, the fuel line goes to the lower plenum, but the fuel line is pretty flexible. So typically I leave that on there so I'm not spilling fuel anywhere, or making a mess or having a fire hazard. Um, I'll leave it right on the plenum. 
I kind of like to take the plenum and flip it out of the way and leave it right in the car. Um, there's a couple of connectors over here that have to be disconnected once you get this plenum out. Um, but another thing to look at is now you have access to the back three injector plugs. So you can start by unplugging those and then there's going to be a couple of six millimeter Allen bolts that hold the plenum down. And then there's also going to be two 12 millimeter nuts that go on studs. So you're going to take the nuts off, the Allen bolts all the way around, the injector plugs, and as you lift this up, you'll see exactly which connectors need to be disconnected. Um, you don't need to disconnect them all, so I usually wait until I just get the plenum up just enough to see which ones need to be undone. Um, a little tip here is make sure that if there's any debris around the plenum, you clean it off with a blowgun. Make sure you're covering up all your ports so you don't get anything inside the engine. Once it falls in the engine, that's it. So cleanliness is key here. Making sure you're not dropping any tools or parts or anything in the engine is very important. Keep an eye out for that. So now you'll be able to see that this valley is pretty full of oil in here. You got a knock sensor there, and then right there is your oil pressure sensor. So it's a little tricky to change. Um, what I do is get it unplugged, just let the plug fall down, you'll be able to reach down and grab it. But use a 15 16 or a 24 millimeter wrench the box end, like a 12 point box end. And you can only get a little bit at a time, so you're gonna wrench it, take the wrench off, turn the wrench around, wrench it a little more, and just keep doing that until you work it out. And then once you get the old one out, you can pop the new one in. All right, now that we get that sensor in, I usually like to take a can of brake clean and wash that valley out. So on the back side, there's a little weep hole and that hole is to allow any moisture or anything else that builds up in this valley to run down and it comes out between the engine block and the transmission. And that's why when this oil pressure sensor fails, it tends to make it seem like it's a rear main sealer or it's coming from the back of the engine because this drains down into that little area. So take the brake clean, wash it down, otherwise you're gonna have this oil splashing around and it may still seem like you have a leak because you have the residual oil kicking around that's coming out. Um, do your best to wash it down, be, my, be environmentally friendly, make sure you have a bucket underneath it to catch your oil and your brake clean. And um, once we get that going, you can start to reassemble everything, 
Now, you're going to need a lower plenum gaskets between the plenum and the cylinder head. You're going to need the gaskets that go between the upper plenum and the lower plenum right here. And you're going to need a throttle body gasket. Um, and, of course, the oil pressure sensor. While you're in here, take a good look at the pigtail and the harness for the oil pressure sensor. I haven't come across one yet that needed to be replaced, but um, sometimes oil damage can, can make the, the wire fail. So it's a good thing to inspect while you're in there. Um, clean up all your mounting surfaces. We'll get this plenum bolted back down, and um, we'll go from there. So reassembly is pretty straightforward. All you really need to do is follow disassembly. A um, few things to look out for is just make sure you have all your electrical connectors and vacuum lines plugged back in, especially things like the brake booster. Last thing you want to do is have a major vacuum leak or have no power brakes when you go to road test this thing. Um, as far as tightening the intake manifold down, I like to start in the middle and work my way out. Just snug, hand tight is perfectly fine on these. And make sure that you top off or change your oil. Um, this is a major leak. A big mistake people do is they get the vehicle back together, they're in a hurry to test drive it, make sure everything's good. They drive it, it has barely any oil in it, that's how you can cause some engine damage. So that's it for me guys. I really hope this video was helpful. I'm going to put a link in the description below to some of the parts that I used in this. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment. Um, I try my best to respond to every single comment that's left and your comments help me improve my channel and the better my channel gets, the more I can help you guys out. So, like I said, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button if you could, and um, thanks again, guys, for watching In the Shop.